Hello Collectors, it's Steven here for the fourth video of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Week and the last Figuarts Ninja Turtle review, this time with, you guessed it, Michelangelo. The orange turtle and the goofball of the group, he was the last one to be released by Tamashi Nations as a Bandai Premium Web Shop exclusive, but was the life of the party worth the wait? Well... Let's take a look to see whether or not he's worth adding into your collection. This is the fourth time we are taking a look at this body, except for now there are orange bands all across it, and the M on the medallion on the belt, the belt buckle you want to call it, is not L, D, or R. Yeehaw! So... Mold lines and such are also a bit more apparent compared to the other figure arts turtles, and things like mold degradation are just a bit more apparent, and that would be just a softening of the sculpt. But still, Mikey looks pretty solid for the most part when he's on your shelf. Up close, though, you start to see some more issues. Mine, for an example, when we're looking at the head, has a bit of green paint bleed over into the eye. Yep, way to go, Mikey. Our night of drinking or something? Hmm. Anyway, it's the same face you've seen before, with the same bandana attachment in the back. And you can also see some nubs where it was pulled out of the mold. As you should expect, the plastron is nicely sculpted and bendy, revealing a fully sculpted torso underneath. Great attention to detail there. The arms, just like the rest of the Ninja Turtles, are nicely sculpted with defined muscles, and the pads are sculpted just as well. Note some mold lines here and there that stick out more than the other figures. Kind of a shame the mold didn't really hold up that much better, especially when they knew ahead of time they would need this mold at least four times. Anyway, the die-cast belt buckle has some nice paint for the M, which is great, and I love it when Tamashi Nations paints something well. It's so clean, but the belt does leave quite a bit to be desired in terms of cleanliness. Difference in materials, I get it, but for about $63, they can do better. The legs are sculpted about as equal as the arms are, but the shins on down suffer from the same paint on die cast fate as the other turtles. And mine's dinged up already, and that sucks. Straight out of the box. Not something that should happen. Last up, the shell. And it's clean from far away, but up close you'll notice a little slop that'll ruin someone's day. Not exactly mine, you have to be really anal about this kind of stuff, but there are some people who care, and that might ruin their overall action figure experience. And since it's there, you gotta call it as you see it, right? It's a review. So all in all, if you're a stickler for the finer details, Mikey has some issues you'll need to really consider before you make a decision to drop the money on it, but if you're not a stickler for those kind of details, he looks just fine. The paint on the legs, though, absolutely disgusting. Since Mikey shares a 100% identical body, except for some small differences like the M there, with the other Ninja Turtles, if you've been watching my reviews so far for the Figure Arts Turtles, you already know what to expect for articulation. However, if this is the only turtle you plan on getting, I'm going to show you a quick rundown of the articulation so you know exactly what you're getting into. So the head plugs into the neck on an actually interesting system. There's one ball joint where the head plugs into, and then that whole system plugs into the neck on another ball joint. So you can twist and turn Mikey's head around, get him to move around a little bit, and then that whole system plugs into the neck, all nice and fine like I just said, and then the neck plugs into the body on a ball joint. So you can move his head forward and back like that, about that far up, that far down, bebop around side to side like so. So that's pretty neat. We have butterfly hinges at the shoulders, as usual. Like the warning I've given before, be wary of the plastron. That can cause paint transfer, and you can see an example of that right there where my thumb was on the thigh near the hip connection. So just be mindful that you don't keep parts touching against the rubber here for too long because that will cause paint transfer, or you keep rubbing up against. So we have ball joints where the arms connect into the body on the shoulder. This is die cast. So you want to make sure that you're moving the joints here at this portion of the arm at the shoulder and not say down here because then you're going to stress the plastic and you don't want to do that because that can lead to stress marks which can lead to cracks and damage overall. We also have hinges and like I've warned before, 
hinges at the shoulders. We could potentially have plastic on plastic contact like we have here. And if you go to move the sh shoulder like that, see, we got rubbing and you don't want to do that. Just be mindful and move the arm down as you raise the arm at the hinge and you'll be good to go. Right, right. You don't want damage there. We have full on bicep swivel. No issues there. Double hinge elbow. Yeah. Pads, unfortunately, do block the articulation a little bit, but it's not that big of a deal because that's a fine enough bend. You don't really need more than that. We do have swivel hinge wrists. Pretty cool. The hands plug in on a ball joint, as you'll see in a little bit. And unfortunately, though, we don't get too much use out of it, but hey, it is what it is. Like I showed you before, there is a full body underneath this whole thingamajig for the shell. So we do have an ab crunch, as usual, for an SH Figure Arts. Not really too usable. There is a ball joint there, but eh, sometimes it likes to move, other times it doesn't. But we do have a waist joint that is a ball joint. So you can twist and turn Mike here around just a little bit. Not too much. You want to be mindful of this, though, because we do have this band that goes around him. And if you do push and pull and twist and turn, you might cause stress and things might come unglued or you just might rip it outright. You don't want to do that, folks. So be careful there. So the legs, the hip configuration is the good old pull down style figure arts hinge system. And when you pull it down, be mindful because once again, we could have plastic on plastic contact as you'll see here. See, so I'm gonna push the hinge up. See, we got plastic on plastic, you don't want that. So make sure you're pulling the hinge all the way down. That's as far as he can spread his legs. And then where the legs plug into the hips, we have ball joints. So Mikey is looking at about that far up and about that far back for movement. And it goes without saying, but we do have swivels, so this way you can move Mikey's legs around like that. Double hinged knees, which once again are blocked a bit by the knee band. And then we have ball joints and ankles, so you can spin them around. A little bit of ankle rocker movement. If you're familiar with common riders or ultramans, ultras, ultra men, whatever you prefer in the SH Figure Arts line, you're not going to get the total ankle rocker movement that you're used to, but hey, you're going to get some. And then finally, we do have the toe hinge, which is awesome, moves all the way up and all the way down. So if you know how to pose your action figures, then you have a lot of joints here to work. Unfortunately, due to design, you're going to have some setbacks, but still, if you are creative, you can use the die cast parts to your advantage. Aha, there we go. And as you can see, he's standing well enough. So overall, nice articulation, and you're only limited to your imagination. Now for the accessories, and I'm a bit mixed here for myself, and you'll see why. So Mikey comes with the usual extra hands, a severed head, a fixed pose set of nunchucks, one set of nunchucks with bendable metal chain, and then the turtle grappling hook with real string for the rope. Pretty neat. So like I said before, the hands usual, with one set of fists, one set of almost fists with holes in them to hold weapons, one set of slightly splayed hands to hold accessories, and a set of fully splayed hands for action poses. Swap the hands, as you know, by popping them off closer to the wrist, but be careful not to pull anything else off with the hands, and then you can just simply pop the new hands on. Now the nunchucks, which are pretty cool, but it's odd that we get two sets. Understandable for posing reasons, but it's still odd. We get one set with pre-posed chains, one all crazy-like in no specific shape, with another in a bent angle shape. The other set has the chain, well, like a real chain would be with links and everything. Both have a little bit of paint slop on the grips, but I mean, to be honest, it's really nothing to be that upset over, and if you are upset, you've got some bigger things to worry about in life. Personally, I would have just expected the normal linked loose nunchucks as some other companies, that's the only thing that they put in the set. <coughs> but the fixed pose ones allow for some very neat posing opportunities. You get Mikey to hold both sets by just putting them into his hands, 
your choice there. But depending on the pose, the loose chain ones just might not be the most useful ones for you. As you can see here, they fall out when you have Mikey try to put them in some part of his body. Might be finicky posing for you if you're a little loosey-goosey and you're not careful with it. Like the other turtles, Mikey comes with storage on his back for his weapons, and you just have to pop the piece off on the shell that's already on there and pop the new piece on, easy as pizza pie. After you pop this new piece on, you just slip in the nunchucks, but be careful because it's a very tight fit and you don't want to break anything or cause paint rub. And of course, once you store these, he can reach back to grab his weapons like he would be drawing them. Last up for the weapons, we get the turtle grappling hook, and this one's really neat. We get one part where he can hold it that's painted silver, along with string that's totally bendable, and then we get the actual hook that does have some nice detail. Unfortunately, there are no points of articulation, so you can't fold it up, which is a bit sad. But hey, maybe that's asking for too much. It's not. To get Mikey or the other turtles to hold it, you get the slightly splayed hands attached, then you slide the grip in between the fingers, then slide the rope into the other hand. From here on out, you just figure out how you want to pose it with your turtle. And there you go! Finally, we get the severed head here, and it's used as an alternate head, surprise, surprise, which gives Mikey a very memeable creep face. And as usual, you just pop the bandana part off, you pop the head off, you pop the new head on, then reattach the bandana part. Very easy to do, and he looks a lot more weird. So, overall for accessories, Mikey comes with the usuals, and his nunchucks, a grappling hook, pretty much all you would need for a Mikey figure. When broken down like that, though, it doesn't really seem like much, but you do get a decent amount. However, maybe another accessory is warranted here. Most definitely, though, there should have been some sort of display stand for the grappling hook. Really, that's something that they really, really dropped the ball on. And size comparison, because for some reason, there are probably five people who didn't watch my other Ninja Turtle reviews, and they don't have an idea of how big this body is yet for Michelangelo. If you cleared off space on your shelf for your average figure arts figure, then chances are, you did right. So, buy now, skip, or wait for that deal. Mikey looks alright with the hideous die cast paint flaking issue with nice articulation, pretty solid accessories, and a very memeable face. What more could you ask for? Oh, a cheaper price and better quality control. Arguably a nice figure in its own right, Tamashi Nations missed the mark on making an awesome figure by making a really good one. Licensing, die-cast, and exclusive status be damned, I really like this figure, but at MSRP, no. A $50 figure, yes. If you're looking to get Mikey, try and get him at a discounted going rate. And I feel like you won't be too disappointed, hardcore and casual fans alike. It's really a shame that overall for the Ninja Turtles that they were setting the bar so high with the price tag because if they were able to drop it down a little lower, I'd argue even $45 is completely reasonable at MSRP for these guys, they would have been so much better. Alas, you're going to have to hunt for a deal to make yourself feel better about these guys. Well, that's it for this video, but that doesn't mean you need to close out just yet. There are a few other videos that just popped up on your screen, so go ahead and click on those to watch some more of my videos, and then there's the description to check out where I've linked to where you can get this figure or others like it, and the credits to see how this video was made, so be sure to check that out. Be sure to like the video, drop a comment, and subscribe. I love hearing from you. Thanks for watching, collectors, and I'll catch you in the next video.